What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Friday, February 16th. SoFi stock here today up 11 cents per share, 1.31%, essentially flat in the after hours, down a penny. As always, take after hours movement with a grain of salt. Volume is incredibly low, but let's start here. Of course, this video is about, you know, tomorrow, ideally. Um, that's going to be the meat and potatoes of the video, but I'm a scalper at heart. So what we have to do is we have to start by taking a look at the intraday, the one-minute chart, and looking at potential opportunity to do some scalping if a stock is in play, okay, and generate some revenue around a core position. Now, looking at SoFi intraday here, guys, you can see it is a little bit choppy intraday. Now, what am I looking for? Like, what, what do I mean when I say if a stock is in play? Well, I'm looking for elevated relative volume, at least 2 to 3x what is normal compared to the 30-day or 90-day average. I'm looking for a fresh news catalyst potentially, you know, one or the other, or potentially both. I'm looking at a wider than normal range. I'm watching something around a extremely key technical level that everybody would agree on if you asked 10 traders, right? And I'm looking at, you know, like next day earnings plays. Like if they reported earnings last night, I'm looking at the stocks the next day. If they reported earnings in the morning, I'm looking at those stocks that same day. You know, SoFi today, this isn't a net positive or a net negative. It just wasn't really in play today, intraday, and that's okay. You know, that's completely separate from the bigger picture. So let's take a look now. Let's move on to the bigger picture because intraday here, I'm only interested in trading things that have edge. Otherwise, to me, it's a waste of my time, okay? SoFi intraday today, not really a heck of a lot of edge to be scalping. And that's okay. Let's move on to the five-minute. But listen, by the way, if you guys want to get, I trade with a group every single day. Um, you know, if you want to get those scalp setup alerts in the room, you know, we also have swing trade setup alerts, UOA alerts, unusual options activity, and I do platinum one-on-one -on -one coaching with a select few. Um, you can find all those at that link in the pinned comment. The price does go up over time. But if you join, you get grandfathered in at the current rate, and uh, I won't raise it on you once you're uh, an active member. But looking here at the five minute, what am I looking for, right? Well, I'm looking for obvious changes in volume that correlate with very specific moves in price, okay? I want to see a larger sample size that agrees with a particular sentiment, whether that be bullish or bearish. Now... Looking here, what are the most clear moves in today's session? Well, you had down, up, down, up. Okay, so let's look at the correlating volume. We expect high volume off the open, right? There's really not a lot to go off of here. I think any, any conclusion, any definitive conclusion that we could come to, I think would be a force. So we have to train ourselves to, if there's nothing there, we don't see anything, we move on, right? We quit wasting our time. All right, let's get really contextual from the day-to-day -day perspective, the self-fulfilling prophecy, the psychological areas to keep a very close eye on here in the coming day. On the 30-minute chart, let's start with that 50 period and that 200 period, okay? The 50 period is absolutely in play. That's less than 1% away, about 0.85% to the downside. And here's what I'm looking at from a bullish perspective. Upon a retest of that 50 period, going to want to see that thing hold hard and strong like we saw today. And if you're a bear, ideally you want to see that 50 period break. You want to see that thing get snapped up to the downside, head down toward the 200 period moving average for a test. Okay, because really you'd prefer to be beneath both of them. All right, then 30 minutes simple here today. Let's take a look at the four hour. You can see here on the four hour chart, today we did something really important. We reclaimed the 200 period here on the four hour. You see that? We closed above that. But that's only six cents away. It's absolutely in play. Here's what I'm looking at. Let's give the bears their day in the sun. If you're a bear, you want to see us fade hard back beneath that 200 period, okay? And fade back down toward that 50 period. But if you're a bull, things get really easy here. Again, when things are simple, don't make them complicated. Just hold that 200 period here on the four-hour chart. That's all you're looking for. Ideally, stay above 850. But that 200 period... You know, if we could grind a little higher, get that 200 period above 850, you know, of course, along with the stock, that would be beautiful if you're a bull, okay? Let's now move on to what is contextually the most important chart of all. That's going to be the daily, because look at this. The 200-day 
is down at eight bucks a share. Okay. But the 50 day is at 845. The stock is at 851 in the after hours. Okay. So here's what I'm looking for. I'm a bull. Really? I'm thinking like two things tomorrow. Get the 50 day up above 850 and hold 850 on the stock because that would hold both the psychological level of 850 a share and the psychological level, the self fulfilling prophecy level of that 50 day moving average. That would be ideal and that would be beautiful. Start making our way up toward nine bucks a share, right? Or the inevitable 10 bucks a share, which is going to be a huge psychological level if we end up seeing a test. Now, if you're a bear here looking at SoFi on the daily chart, what you really want to see is a downside break of that 50 day moving average. Head down toward that 200 day moving average at eight bucks a share. Because really, what you're after is a reclaim of eight bucks a share and that 200 day moving average as a resistance level. Bears, you want to get down below eight bucks, you know, very badly. Because then you're below not only the 50 day, not only the 200 day, but also that psychological level of eight. Okay. That's what bears are looking for. Bulls, understand that because you want to understand the psychology of, uh, of your enemy, so to speak. Let's now zoom out just a little bit and take a look at implied volatility. Understand that we're currently in the low to mid range of IV compared to the last four months or so. Just understand that when you're buying options, ideally most people would want to be buying options when IV is quite low. And then option sellers will typically like to do so when IV is high. Okay, but when, I, when IV is high, also, the option traders are showing a, a certain level of insecurity in the stock at the current levels. They're pricing in more potential volatility. And there's also a slightly elevated crush of IV, sorry, a, sli a slightly elevated risk of IV crush, okay? But IV currently in the uh, mid to low range compared to the last three to four months, all right? Now, let's take a look at the options bias. 155,000 to total contracts traded today. It's a pretty good sample size. Look at this bias here. 112,000 calls, 42,000 puts. That's a heavy call bias here today on SoFi. The short-term speculators, that 0 to 20 delta range, you can see here that we're also seeing some call bias here. 35,000 calls, 19,000 puts. Okay, so the short-term traders are, are betting on upside, looks like here. And then you look at every other delta range. So we have the short-term, and then you have the mid-term, and the long-term, if you average what those typically are out. The delta ranges, of course, tell you out of the money to what degree at the money and in the money to what degree. All of them, SoFi, overall and all the delta ranges, leaning to the call side here today. Okay, understand though, again, around here risk management number one, those traders can absolutely be wrong and they oftentimes are, so stay in the game, manage your risk. It's never worth one trade, okay? Listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. I, uh, I greatly appreciate it. Maybe drop a like on the video before you head out, helps out tremendously, and I'll see you in the next one.